And who, do, who else do we have? I think uh, upcoming, up and coming, we got Estrada versus Rodriguez. Uh, who do you have and why on that one? What are the first names? Jesse, Jesse, mm. right? Yeah, okay, okay, Jesse. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, th yeah. I, think, I think I got Jesse. I think Jesse's amazing. I think, I think he's super underrated. Just um, a lot of those um, lower weight classes don't really um, get the recognition that they deserve, but um, he's a great fighter. I think I think he um, he's thinking almost like a past the torch type moment. So I think he got yeah. that one. Okay, awesome. Oh, that was great. Thanks. Um, and then, uh, how did you feel about the uh, you know the unified heavyweight matchup between um, Fury and Usyk? You know, some people were saying it was mixed. They thought you know Tyson had it. How, how did you feel that fight went? I I thought it was well. It, was, it went well. It was very exciting. Um, I had Usyk winning, and I thought it was a great fight. I don't I don't think um. I don't think Tyson got robbed at all. To be honest, yeah. I had it like six rounds to six rounds even, but then with um, Usyk dropping him at like the ninth, I think that would put him up by one. So that's a, that's how yeah. I had it. And um, yeah. a lot of people, they like to, anytime is a, like a close fight, they'll say, Oh, he got robbed. Well, nah, he didn't get robbed. If it was a close fight, if it's a close fight, it can go either way. So um, I think, I think the right man won. Yeah, I agree with you. I think as soon as someone ends up on the canvas or even close, it's kind of like, you know, yeah. it's sw it's swung now to that to that side. Um, yeah. you know, as a as a young fighter, you know, um in in a couple of ways, one like your age, you know, very relevant for this question, but then also like you're you're working your way up through the ranks, you know, you're trying to build your name and your career. How do you feel about the impact of, you know, misfits boxing and um, you know, the influencer boxing and crossovers and how, how does that impact you as a young professional? Um, I think I think it has a positive impact. I think a lot a lot of people say it's negative, but personally, I think it's positive. Um, mm. I think I think it just brings new eyes to the sport. Whether it's like MMA crossing over to boxing or vice versa, that just brings um, MMA fans over to boxing. And as far as like influencer boxing, um, all these like different average people that that weren't boxing fans are watching like their favorite influencers box and they're like, Oh, this is kind of cool. And now, now they kind of um, start to become normal boxing fans starting to venture into just um, real boxers. So I think, it, I think it brings more eyes to the sport. So I like it. You don't think it, um, it cheapens at all the, the actual skill of, you know, a good boxing match and what I'm, that's supposed to look like. Like, I, I think like it does, but then it doesn't at the same time. At the end of the day, wow. um, I'm not going to be expecting like a YouTuber to be be on a world class level of boxing under the YouTuber. I'm I'm expecting it to be like you know a scrappy, dirty type of fight. Mm. But that, those those mm -hmm. are the fights that are exciting. So um, no, I don't think so. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they, they, they tend to be the the fan favorites, right? The ones that are, yeah. are, uh, it's amazing to me that still, you know, like, and, and I'm a boxing fan too. So I'm watching fights as a boxing fan, the ones that the general population call boring. I'm like, that was a great fight because yeah. there's new, there's nuance to it that I think, um, you know, someone who understands boxing and, and loves boxing will appreciate, but you're right. You know, like, so the average people like buying the pay-per-views and, you know, getting the tickets sold to like, you know, they're looking for, they're looking for the knockout. They're looking for the Deontay Wilder moment, you know, yeah, um, exactly. even if it, even if it's like over in round one and they were expecting 12, but, um, yeah, I'm with you on that one. And then, you know, I guess that leads into uh, a popular debate is, you know, the, the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul extravaganza that is now postponed. How do you think that fight could impact Mike's legacy or, or will it? Um, I I don't think it really it really affects his legacy like that to be honest. Because um, a, a lot a lot of people aren't thinking ex expecting much from him because of the fact that um I think he's like fifty seven now, so they're not yeah they're not expecting him to do much. Everyone's just more excited to just see him in the ring or excited you know having high hopes that he knocks out Jake Paul. So I don't I don't think it affects his legacy to be honest. And even if it did, with the amount of money he's making, it really doesn't don't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, so you got to pay those bills even when yeah. you're retired, I guess. Hey, you know. Hey. So we we love to like chat with you know young boxers like yourself and people um you know looking to 
build their careers and, you know, make their statements. Anyone in your gyms or in, uh, that you come in contact with or sparring that we need to look out for? Um, no, definitely. Um, one of my good friends, Chan Thompson, um, he's in Vegas right now, but he's actually, um, from Montreal. Um, he's ranked fifth right now in the WBA at uh, lightweight. So he's definitely, he's definitely going to like win one of those, um, belts like for sure within the next year or so um definitely my good friend uh Kamel Malton um he's three and oh now all the sign of Floyd definitely a good one to look out for too okay awesome well maybe we'll try and get them on the show and uh we could uh we could mention your name as a as a recommendation I'm curious to know if there's any uh female boxing boxers in the stables or that that you would recommend or that we should keep our eye out for as well uh you probably know her I'm from BC Nyusha she just wanted her oh, yeah. pro debut. Yeah, she yeah. definitely want to look out for. Yeah, she's she's a talent, a definitely um, you know a, a star in the BC scene, and I, I really look forward to the statement she's going to make in, in pro boxing as well. At one and zero. Awesome. Well, I thank you for the predictions and and your thoughts on the kind of the current climate of boxing. I, I love that. Um, what's next for you? What kind of major have you set some goals, or you're just kind of you know putting your head down and training right now? What what's next? No, I mean, like I said, I'm always ready to fight whenever. Um, one of the biggest problems with me is just um, only certain places let me fight at 17. So that's why I'm not super, super active like right now, just because of the, because I always get offers to fight on different places and all these different big cards I get offered to fight on, but I just can't because of my age. So um, I'm just training right now. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'll get back in August, but if not, October when I turn 18, so I definitely have like, I'm, I'll for sure be fighting in October. And then after that, I'm going to be like super active. Amazing. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, the 18 year old version of you busting out on the scene and uh, following your career as you continue to do great things. And um, you're definitely, uh, well, even though you're dual citizen, Canada still, still uh, very much feels like you're ours. And uh, we're really proud of you. Empire looks forward to watching and seeing uh, what you're able to accomplish. Congratulations on signing with TMT. And uh, thank you so much for your time and coming on the show. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Make sure to listen, follow, and subscribe to Empire Boxing on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube.